Anyways, let's now move on to artifact sets. They made a set for him. It's good. Use it. All right, so it's 15% animal damage and then an additional 40% normal and charge attack damage and then an additional 10% attack speed. That being said, it's not the only option you can go for. You can obviously go for 4 P's VV if he ends up being a uh, solo animal on your team. Good if solo animal. It's gonna be his best option if he's solo animal because you need VV because VV's broken. And then, let it be known, I do this reluctantly. So, this is Shimanawa's. This is his signature set. It's like uh, somewhere between a 7 and 10% increase. If you already have a good Shimanawa's... You don't really need to go for his signature set. I fucking hate it. But if you have a Shimanawa set and you want to use it, you can. If you don't want to farm a whole ass new fucking domain, you don't have to. <sighs> Just know that I, I look upon you with disdain. What I feel for you isn't hatred, it's disgust. You can go two piece, two piece, but that's a significantly bigger drop. Go from 40 to 38. It's also fine, but you're starting to get into pretty big differences. Generally wouldn't recommend, but it's fine, I guess. The thing is, I know a lot of people have a lot of Shimanawa's pieces from farming Emblem for a really long time. If that's the case for you, Shimanawa's is fine on him. I hate Shimanawa's because I think that people try to force it on characters when it's actually not good on them way too goddamn fucking often. People try to force Shimanawa's child all the time. People try to force Shimanawa's Xiao for some fucking reason. I understand people trying to force Shimanawa's like Yoimiya or Hu Tao, but I still don't think it's optimal most of the time. But in the case of Scaramouche, it's actually not a bad option. Just know that I don't like you. All right, artifact stats. <laughs> You're gonna want to go attack, animo, crit. You can get away with like attack, attack, crit, or attack, animo, attack, but it's not good. Like it's not what you want to do. You can go fully M and do like meme shit, but I wouldn't recommend it. He actually has good scaling on his abilities. You're gonna have better results if you don't do that. And then finally, we get to teams. So let's cover his two team options. The first one, Wanderer, Ferrazon, Flex, Flex. And the second one, Wanderer, Flex, Flex, Flex. <laughs> Wanderer is not a character like Hu Tao that has like a specific reaction they're built towards and wants to have specific elements on your team. Or a character like Nahida that has their teams revolve around the reactions you can do with the other characters. Wanderer is a character that does numbers. He can swirl, but his kit isn't really centered around it. And if you're going to focus on swirl reactions and on chain reactions with swirl, you're better off using sucrose. He's effectively a mouthwash color physical unit, except superconduct doesn't help him and he doesn't need a battery. So basically, he's very free when it comes to team options. He doesn't have anyone that like synergizes with him incredibly well, but he also doesn't have, like has a lot of options that are pretty solid. If we wanna like actually get into this, we are going to have to talk about how good I expect him to be. I expect him to be pretty good. I don't expect him to be anywhere close to the kind of stuff you'd see on Nahida. He is a hyper carry, but his numbers seem to be balanced in a way that he's like pretty okay, like pretty solid. His biggest issue by far is that Farazan without C6 is kind of not great. I don't know if I'll do a pre-release specifically on Farazan. I don't think so. I feel like her stuff is too closely related to Wanderer to be able to do her separately. I'll go over pre-release stuff pretty quickly without going into all the nitty gritty. Stats don't really matter that much. Base attack not that high. Attack percent ascension. Basically Sarah's E but without the buff. Right you you use your skill and then it gives you a charge shot that go that charges up fast. It has a little bit of grouping on it. And then her Q is basically the buff from Sarah's E, but it also gives animal res shred, which is pretty nice. So she shreds animal resistance by 30. She gives about 30 animal damage. But yeah, it's kind of an icy quill effect for animal. But instead of being limited by a total amount, it's limited by a cooldown on it. It's not good. It's base attack, not total attack for Ferrazon. Her base attack is pretty low. It's basically impossible to get her burst back without fav if you're not at C6. So you're kind of forced to use fav, which is a low base attack weapon. And you don't get it that often. It's not good. This is like less than 500 DPS on your team. It's not very good. The main like main things about her kit is effectively she gives animal damage and animal res shred. And if you have constellations, she gives animal crit damage as well. Her burst lasts for 12 seconds, which at C0 is actually enough for Wanderer. But her biggest issue by far is that she does not generate enough energy. 
Her energy is generated from when her, like, explosion after charge attack after E hits enemies, just like Sarah. The thing is, if you don't have C6, that only happens once per rotation. Maybe twice if you do two in your downtime, but it can be actually be pretty hard to do two. So it's generally just going to be once. Oh yeah, her burst can also miss and is inconsistent. But at the very least, uh, her burst does apply the, the effect for her E, so her burst can actually generate energy if you have C6. So this can actually generate energy as well. Her C6 helps her energy uh, her energy require requirements a massive amount and if you don't have c6 she's barely playable as much as that sucks to say like it's hard to play her if you only have two animal units scaramouche plus ferrazon is like it's gonna be hard to actually burst off cooldown so you almost need three animal units it's rough it's really fucking rough all right like if you've ever played sarah imagine how bad that would be if raiden's e basically didn't generate any fucking particles and if raiden didn't give flat energy you know how much energy you need on sarah already ferrazon is so much worse without c6 we can take a look at the kind of stuff she'd do so she'd get two scaramouche gets four if you play with Bena jongli let's say she catches her own fa her own fav right that's 270 er with fav if you don't catch the particles on her and you try to pre-funnel your scaramouche instead it's 320 if you don't do that but you don't have fav it's 340 <laughs> Her energy requirements are a little bit uh, questionable. Point being, or if you play her before C6, she needs an incredibly high amount of ER. If you manage to reach that ER, she's a pretty good option because she does increase Scaramouche's damage by a pretty significant amount, but she'll basically have no personal damage. Because of that, that actually makes it so that if you don't have C6, you don't really lose that much by going another unit instead of Ferrazon and just having another unit like off field damage dealer, like Fischl or something, instead of trying to force fairs on uh, if you can't get enough here to make her burst work or even if you can the difference won't be that big but yeah so because because he has a lot of flexibility in his teams instead of going through the kind of teams that he has i'll instead just go through the units that he can work with so we'll separate by elements right you will have the pyro the cryo and the rest because i don't think that electro or hydro is really something you want to put on your team specifically for the uh, ascension one bonus that you get from it but i think that pyro and cryo can be which means that for pyro i think that bennett is obviously pog i think that toma is actually okay i think that Changling is okay with bennett when it comes to cryos i think lila is actually pretty good now obviously lila without cons has a weak ass fucking shield that kind of sucks but i do think i do think lila is pretty okay with her uh with him diona it's more defensive it's okay -ish. ganyu i mean it's okay -ish. Kind of like whatever. Rosaria, Okage, Kaya, meh. Kaya's icicles, unlike Shangling's Pyronado, follow your character vertically. So Shangling's Pyronado, when you're up in the air, it stays on the ground. But Kaya's icicle stay with you, which means that if you end up flying above the enemy's hitboxes, your Kaya stops hitting them. So that's something just to keep in mind. If you're not above the enemy's hitboxes, K is good. Or Okage, like same as Rosaria, basically. But it is one more thing to keep in mind. Uh, <clears throat> listen. It's not, like, very good, but it's also not terrible, because, like, the- <sighs> Wait, does he give attack speed to catalysts? He doesn't. The- the cooldown reduction can be fine, right? It- it lets you get tighter rotations. It's not bad, but it's also not great. It's generally not something I'd ever recommend, really. Don't make me right, Ayaka. Ayaka's gonna be fine, I guess, but, like, bro, just play an Ayaka team. Okay, so that's it for the- the- <coughs> Pyro and Cryo ones. So now we're left with all the other options, right? Uh, so as a general rule, you don't really want another animal unit just for the fuck of it. If you have Ferrazon's C6, then other animal units gain a bit in value because, I mean, you're getting animal damage and res shred, but then on top of that, you're also getting animal crit damage. But it's still generally not the main stuff I'd tell you to go for. You can use Kazuha, but meh. I'm not a huge fan. Same for Sucrose. I'd say that the main two to consider would be like Jean and Venti. So Venti, very good in AoE. Wanderer's Charge Attack seems to hit pretty easily all enemies in Venti Burst. And then Jean, meh at C0, pretty good at C4. Honestly, Jean's constellations almost make me feel like they knew what they wanted to do with Scaramouche back in 1.0, right? Her C2 is really good for Scaramouche. Her C4 is really good for Scaramouche. And her C6 is unironically kind of fucking nice for Scaramouche. <laughs> It's not great, but like it's relevant. I'd say if you don't have any cons on her, I don't really see the point of running her over someone like Bennett. Uh, if you have C2, I'd still say that you're much better off running Bennett. But if you start getting to C4, then yeah, 
Yeah, that's that, that, that can start being okay. Uh, up to pretty good. Yunzin, uh, Yunzin's biggest issue is that she is very, very energy hungry and doesn't generate a lot of energy, which means if you play her in solo Geo, she needs so much ER that it's actually difficult to get enough in your artifacts to literally just be able to use her burst. But then on top of that, if you play her with another Geo unit, if it's Zhongli and your pillar expires, then it's as if you weren't playing her with another Geo unit. Uh, if you play her with double Geo, that's two elements you're not putting on your team first care much as buffs right and is she providing enough with her kit to make up for it i would say not really yunjin is fine but she's not like great even on a character like Scaramouche. And especially considering that when you start being in AoE situations and you want to use your charge attacks, she's kind of just fucking useless. I mean, Albedo, Zhongli, Zhongli, okay, solid shield option. If you want a shield, Zhongli's good. Uh, that being said, if you don't have the cryo buff yet, Lila is actually pretty nice as well. And if you don't have the pyro buff yet, Toma is actually pretty nice as well, especially if you have a few constellations on him. Zhongli is not as far above the other shielders as he usually is when it comes to just like putting a shield on your team not for like battery purposes because wanderers ascension one basically buffs the fuck out of toma and buffs the fuck out of lila and of uh, diona by basically just making them give you a lot more shit albedo okay i guess he doesn't really do that much not great probably more like meh because again, you kind of don't want to play Albedo without double Geo him for a different reason because Geo Resonance helps his damage a lot. But then if you're playing double Albedo, that's two elements you're missing out on. Is Albedo's damage really enough to make up for that? Uh, but it is going to be pretty comfy if you end up deciding to go for Zhongli Albedo because it's pretty like no brain. I don't think I even want to talk about Dory, Guki, meh. Like you can play a Hyperloom Core with uh, with Wanderer. You can do Wanderer, Guki, Singto, Naida, I guess. But like at that point, you're barely even playing Wanderer. Uh, when it comes to healing options, she's okay, I guess. I'm a little bit worried about Yai. I don't actually think you can actually get your totems, go to Scaramouche, and then burst before your totems expire on Yai, which means that you need to cast your totems three times per rotation instead of just two, which is... <laughs> Not a fan. Raiden, not really. Terra, not really. Saying not really. Fischl, okay. -ge. Beto, okay. -ge. If Fischl. Razor, not really. Lisa, like, can work, but not really. Nahida, I don't like Nahida. I think it's very difficult to actually proc reactions. It's fine if you're playing her with another Electro, but, like, meh. And obviously, it's gonna be even more relevant with. Uh, with the other Dendro units. Again, obviously, you can just play him in Hyper Bloom and play a three unit team, but it's not really a Wanderer team at that point. Now, for the Hydro stuff, obviously, you've got Singto, good. Yelan, good. Uh, do keep in mind that both of these characters work on normal attack, not on charge attack. And unlike Hu Tao, who by virtue of being a polearm user, needs to do a normal attack before a charge attack, Scaramouche, by virtue of being a Catalyst user, can just do a charge attack. And if you do that, you're not gonna get the procs from your Singto and Yelan. You can't just charge attack spine if you use Singto and Yelan. You're gonna need to weave in some normal attacks. Uh, Kokomi is a fine healing option, I guess, but she's not great, because you can't really refresh the jellyfish. Mona's not great. Eh. Off-field burst Ayato for the normal attack damage bonus? True. Based. Hell yeah, dude. I love this normal attack damage bonus. Don't do it. What about Child for the plus one normal attack talent? I'm not even gonna put him. Okay, that only leaves us with Ferrazon. Very good at C6. Okay, at C0. So that kind of does it with the units. A little bit more uh, of an elaboration on this. Your flex flex. Generally, you either want to focus on damage stuff, so you can go for like Bennett plus whatever. Bennett Changling, Bennett Rosaria, Bennett Lila. Pretty good, actually. Bennett Zhongli. You can go for an off-field core of like double Electro or double Cryo. One thing that I expect to like quite a bit is going to be Freeze with something like Singto Rosaria. If you end up playing him in Freeze, right, you don't get Cryo Resonance and you're not using a Rosaria, you'd only be getting the 20% from his Ascension, which puts you at 44, which means that you could actually potentially use Blizzard Strayer, even though I'm not sure how good his Blizzard Strayer uptime actually would be in single target. In OE, it should be fine. In single target, because his charge attacks apply two units of Animal, I think, unless they change it, they might have. In single target, because it's two units, I would expect it to be 
pretty hard to maintain freeze. Uh, but in AoE, Blizzard Shriver might actually be okay. It's still generally not something I'd recommend, but it's worth knowing about, I guess. I'm not going to include it. I'm not going to include it here, but I guess it's nice to know about it. Uh, but yeah, so generally, I like Bennett plus Shield Flex. I like freeze i like taser and if you don't have c6 Farazan, you can also consider fucking wonder national i guess yeah those are generally the team that i'd expect to be pretty good at the end of the day though they're not really like freeze teams or taser teams or it's kind of just a team that revolves around scaramouche's damage that also happens to have whatever units but yeah uh, so I think that does it for the Wanderer pre-release. Uh, like I said earlier, I don't think I'll do a Farazan pre-release. I've talked about her a decent-ish amount here. If there's something about Farazan that I haven't answered that you would like to know, feel free to go stop by at my Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Jeff 77, where I stream basically every day. Don't forget to do the thing, like, subscribe, all that. For those of you who haven't, uh, go check out my child video, the child asks the Jeff, because the outro on that video is probably the best out of any outro on any of my videos so watch it to the end i think it's a fucking banger outro and uh yeah that'll be it so thanks for watching and uh bye youtube